Good luck. I did recently fix the translation bot, although you can't interact with it during the game. Um, now you can see... Previously there were some issues with language translation. Let me focus on the game for a minute. Um, so... I'm wanting to play a third Falrux strategy. And I don't mind playing um, my rook to the third file and this pawn up. Um, so I was... Uh, can I play this pawn again? If they play this, what am I supposed to do? I think it's playable. Why do I not remember? Oh, I remember now. Okay, yeah, this... It's complicated. This is fine. I've been looking at this a couple days recently, but without actually playing this game, um, you don't build up the muscle memory to say when to do or when not to do a thing. So the deal here is I could play the rook over, and if they exchange bishops, in that case, after the wrong diagonal bishop drop, I can do a wrong diagonal bishop drop, and if they take here, I can take there. Therefore, this is playable. So that's what's going on here. And at this point, it's fine for me to close the diagonal, it always is. Um, it's not what I aspire to do, but I think this here is fine. Um, <laughs> interesting. So I have one option to lift the rook, one to block my rook. Um, honestly, neither of them look right third option could be maybe push this pawn, which also doesn't look right. Hmm. I think this is okay. Yep, yep, yep. I see people are enjoying the emoticons already. Um, it surprises me that that works. So... Without doing anything too crazy, my king does need to make it toward the corner here. Um... I don't know if I have time... Yeah, I, I think I have time to raise the silver, tuck the king behind it. As opposed to... Well... So, one thing I want to do, so my king has this escape hatch, is play that. And now that they're declaring an attack on the edge, I think I want to raise this and tuck the king behind, as opposed to spending multiple moves bringing the king into the corner. I could bring the king one cor one square closer here, but I think this castle is fine too. Hmm, slightly inconvenient. Um.
I think completing this Mino makes sense. Uh, then I could transition to high Mino next. Where I'm less sure is that the silver could approach through the center of the board, and I'm not sure what to do about that. Um, Oh, actually, this is fine. This is loose here. So I get a free tempo later on. If I'm counting pawns correctly. Um... I don't like this position. All right, we're going to transition to High Mino Castle. I don't think there's time to move the silver up straight away. Even if somehow I end up giving away this pawn, it's just fine. Um... Basically, I come to this move through process of elimination that I'm looking at other moves and I don't like them. Like pushing the center pawn opens me up to this nasty fork. Moving the king in without having played this pawn first doesn't make much sense. Right, so... Their silver is not over here, so I don't need to worry about this pawn move. Uh, worry is kind of the wrong word, but... We're going to just play High Mino Castle. And now that we've played this, um, it's safer to bring the king into the corner than it was a minute ago. They've taken care of the weakness on their back rank, so this makes it possible for them to attack in different ways that they didn't have a minute ago here. Um... We'll get the king out of the line of fire, so this bishop does not have a tactic later. We're going to bring this knight out. So with this, I'm declaring uh, I'm okay with exchanging bishops. Am I really okay with it? I don't know. But I've got to do something. So it's possible however undesirable, that I might offer this exchange soon. 
It might be desirable even, I don't know, but it doesn't look that way. Um, that's a bit direct. Why this? Why now? What's the idea? I take this, and after they take, I'm going to drop on the same file. And then I can open this diagonal next. So I have made a target they can snipe at. This is true. Um, my next big idea was to open the diagonal uh, before they can bring their rook onto the same file. Maybe I want to throw this pawn exchange into here somehow. Um, hmm. Yeah, I am just out of ideas. I don't like being under attack. I prefer to have the initiative myself. So we'll do what it takes to get the initiative. My rook is loose. I did just stick a pawn in front of my rook. So it's going to be difficult to activate it. Um... If I were more patient, maybe I would have moved my silver or something. I don't know. But here, their rook is temporarily blocked by this gold general who's moved to the edge of the board. So I think now is the correct time for me to do something drastic. Um, so earlier I was mentioning how there's a translation bot for chat that detects the language and will translate into English or into Japanese from whatever language the source text might be in. There were some bugs with that. I fixed those bugs, or at least create, created some kind of workaround for now. Um, so, hooray for open source or free software. Um, Well, I'm trying to read. I've got five minutes remaining. Plus Biyami time. In my attempts to read, it seems not to matter whether I play the silver move to defend my rook now or later. So I'll we'll play it now. This takes away a potential bishop drop from them later. Um, I acknowledge I'm still under attack here. I've blocked my rook. There's no way I can improve that right now, so I'm trying not to worry about it. Oh, I could push on the same right-hand fourth file. Give my rook somewhere else to go. 
Um, I don't think I'm that desperate yet, but I could consider that. Like, the rook's not going to be successful in front of this castle. It's just not. But I could consider it anyway. The more rook options the rook has available, the better. Although their rook is going to invade any second now. Supported by this gold and the silver. Yeah, what I kept thinking about is, like, do I push the pawn? And if I do, then eventually they're going to bring the rook over, and I'm going to have this bishop forking the gold and rook. I'm threatening to promote back here. The rook drops back, and then I could sack the bishop. But this doesn't gain me anything either. So, not sure why I bothered to think about it. There's just no way that I come out on top unless they take my bishop. Um... So, yeah, that's confusing. This is why, in general, I've stuck to playing Central Falrook and 81 Dojo. Because um, I've not wanted to try to learn this stuff. And now I'm expressing an interest in learning again. But boy, I get these really difficult positions. Uh, okay. That's clever. But maybe it's too clever. I mean, yes, ostensibly those two pieces by themselves can fight away my rook. But that's uh, an unnecessary act of heroism here. Um, it isn't necessary for this silver to pick this fight all by itself. It's possible, but there's just not a need for it. Um, so this vacates this square that my bishop can now use to promote. And it's not glorious, but at least I'm fighting. Now where this might get unclear is that they could drop a bishop on the same diagonal. Um, but I don't think that profits them. Maybe it does. Maybe I've been careless. Yeah, if they actually do drop on the same diagonal, I kind of have to take it, don't I? Hmm. That's not good.
Man, I really wanted to take this gold, but I can't find any way to make an attack succeed. Um, when I've given them the rook for a gold. It's not a worthwhile exchange here. There's some ways I could drum up some attack, but it's just not enough. This bishop drop did not concern me. The bishop and the rook are pretty much equal. I mean, yeah, details matter sometimes in some positions. One is much needed much more than the other. Um, this doesn't seem to be one of those special cases. So now the silver general is loose. The silver is supporting the pawn. The pawn is preventing my knight from jumping in and taking the pawn and then taking here. Suffice it to say, like, I'm going to be bringing the silver toward the king. I'm going to bring this knight toward the king and hope that I have an attack. Uh, that's the plan. I've made this kind of error before, where I have a silver that's just loose in the center of the board. And I might commit such an error in this game as well. But... I mean, it was great. It supported this attack, but it allowed my bishop to drop and promote and come back and hit the silver. So... It exerts a lot of influence, but there's a downside to every move. The downside to be bringing the rook out is... My rook's a target. Uh, it's just this bishop is not the lightest piece that could exploit this target. They have a lighter attacking piece, uh, like a pawn, they could use to force my rook to move. They might bring up their rook. I didn't think about that. I have been thinking, though, regardless of what they do, I'm probably bringing up the silver, bringing the knight, trying to hit stuff but I need a more concrete plan. That's loose. I'm sorry. Um... Yeah, I don't like this silver on 5-5. Five five. It prevents me from forking gold and rook. So... I'll expose my king a bit and break the maxim about not pushing my center pawn. Um... But yeah, my aim is material profit, which usually gets me in trouble. Will it get me in trouble this time? I'm not sure.
Oh. I have a tactic. Hmm. Okay, I'm not even trying to collect the silver at this point, but just force it to move away from defense of this square. Um... Yeah, this said, uh, or that said, this is still menacing. The silver's still too close to my castle, so let's dismiss it. There we go. Hmm. I don't know why I'm so possessed with... I'd considered Rook takes gold for quite some time, and I could not find a way to forcibly win material with Rook takes gold. So we're going back to plan A. Where plan A is just force this bishop rook exchange. Um. So knight takes uh, next on the menu. Now uh, this gold is loose. Um, but yeah, my bishop can take care of that. And in the event that they defend with their other rook, I can do another bishop drop to, again, take care of this gold. I can be a little bit patient here. Um, further, because I have all the di all the bishops, this diagonal being open is not an issue, or at least not a problem. Oh. Actually, I don't even need to chase this gold directly. I might have, like, ways both my bishops could ensnare this rook. So they possibly... They're gonna chase my horse. And try to force an exchange. Yeah. Alright. I should have seen that coming a little bit earlier. Because it makes a lot of sense. Um, my horse doesn't have a lot of spaces to go. Sanju
<laughs> Trying to read this in time pressure is challenging. I like, wait, bishop drop here? Hit this rook? No, bishop drop here? Uh, thought about this briefly. I'm sure there's some way to uh, defeat this one, because this is just too loose and unavailable to move. Uh, even though it's closer to the king in some sense. I need to avoid this square. So I need to... I'm not sure it matters if I picked here or there, but I think here probably is safer in some way. Actually, they both lose. Well, that's great. Um, hmm. I cannot read. That's, well, we're going to get a counterattack, so it'll be fine. No, it won't. But let's pretend it will. Things will work somehow. So, yeah, they just attack the bishop directly, and I missed the simple direct move. So maybe this bishop drop hitting this rook was better. I thought there was, like, rook up. And then I couldn't defend this because this bishop has nowhere to go. Um, well, bishop 5-5 five five might have been the trick. Yeah, I missed bishop 5-5. Five five. Well, then this still has nowhere to go. Hmm. Yeah, so... There's just not a good move for me there. Marketplace back. No, then they gold takes. Hmm. I accidentally activated all their pieces. Um... That's a mistake. Unless there's... Uh, I don't understand how this could be anything other than a mistake. Just simply moving the rook over. Anyway. Yeah, let's see if we can pursue the king somehow. No. I don't have an attack. Um, still losing the knight. Gonna get a rook. The rook could be useful on the back rank. Uh, as long as I don't drop it to some fork. Yes, no. Well, again, as long as there's not a fork on this diagonal, and there's, in many cases, this fork is going to be a problem, so I could proactively do something, but bringing the knight forward is probably not something I'd regret. Um... There it is. Um, finally got on the board. Um, I am bewildered by this move. Um, mm.
The motivation is they want to promote the rook right away. I'm going to delay the rook promotion just a little bit. Man, I was picking the one of these two squares. In part because I'm still afraid of some fork picking off my rook. But there's profit pursuing this king. There's profit in collecting the knight, hitting the gold. Um, or there's also profit in promoting the rook, striking the gold, etc. So there's a lot of ways this could go right. There's a lot of ways this could go wrong. They have a bishop in hand, and only a bishop in hand. That's risky. This is why it's risky. Nothing is defending the base of their castle. I mean, yeah, it's super awkward placing this pawn here, but it's also awkward dealing with this trapped silver that has no compatriot to defend it. So, like, the entire castle is about to be mopped up. Starting with the silver, but not ending with the silver. Like, my horse makes its way over here, collects the silver. They block with something. I promote my dragon. Like, this whole thing is um, trapping the king. <sighs> they have nothing to interpose with anymore. Um... I'm 
I'll be patient. Um... Yeah, I don't see a mate. The anxious thing for me to do would be to start to engage in something that I can't explain. Um. So gold up, horse takes pawn. That's what I've found. So I need to accept that I did not find a checkmate. And be patient. Of course, finding a checkmate would be better, but I did not find one, so I need to be okay with this. So I'm attacking the bishop directly, the rook indirectly, the gold directly, the king indirectly. Present threat silver drop here. That's clever. That is clever. Um, Yonju 
I don't see a mate. So I'll just bully them this way. Oh, goodness, my dragon defends this. Oh, this simply wins material. Uh, I was thinking, well, knight takes, and then I drop the silver here, and then after I drop the silver, then they do something, and then I take here, and... No, actually, this just directly wins material. Um, that's stronger than I imagined. Okay. Yeah, with an extra bishop or an extra rook, perhaps I can figure out how to checkmate. Or at least not get checkmated. Now, if I take this, they can actually hit my horse back here. So my original plan might be best still. Taking this directly leads to that. And I don't have a crushing blow there. Um, Yeah, I'll survive their attack. Now that I have a bishop, if they bring the rook forward... Well, this bishop fork would not be a smart idea because they have gold takes. Still, I'll be fine. Um, But this gold is only defending the square as long as the gold's still here. So I could push the pawn. Um, not sure where the gold would even move to, but afterward I would have this bishop drop forking 
this double bishop battery job. and forking the rook too. So if the gold moves, again, even if they do gold takes, I could drop a bishop here to win a rook. Because this promotion mating threat here is so strong. Um, more likely they will drop the silver here and I'll just take it. And I've already verified that there's no king, rook, battery, fork, whatever even though my king is wide open on this diagonal. Right. Oh, this still protects the key square. All right. Um, That's disgusting. But if it functions, it functions. There's one very specific tactic that I'm going all in on trying to exploit, so... Yeah. Alright. That's fine. Um... And I'm actually quite content with just taking a gold general. That could be very useful for me um, very soon here. How can I be so content? Because I have another idea. Okay, so I slightly missed the target here, right? Um, that's fine. Because there's another way I can hit this target. Um... Sanjuvio The thing that troubles me is a peace draw.
Mm -hmm. But I think it's fine. Sanjubio so this is where I'm confused. Um, because clearly I survive. Um, I just need to checkmate. Sanjubio. Sanjubio This approaching the castle thing is so delicate. But this actually has an attacking feature. 
this retreat. So um, I'm optimistic that I can continue approach. I'm still continuing to search. There's got to be a freaking mate here somewhere. But um, continuing to search for that. So the silver's pinned. I expect a pawn drop. I can take the pawn. I don't know what they're going to do next. I guess they could drop a knight to hit my horse. Dragon takes might be stronger than this takes. The dragon takes loose a tempo. So eventually the big punch that's going to land is I take this gold and then I take here multiple times. This actually gives me an idea. Let's pin the silver so it can't take back. Also, let's hit this horse. Or knight. Um, So now this is locked in place, defending the silver. So after I take the knight, I can place it here. Because this is locked in place. This is a promoted knight we're talking about. Or maybe... No, this is a promoted silver. Um, The long-awaited punch finally hits, and um, I think I finally conducted an attack correctly.
30秒。I wish I saw something fancy here. It's a bit too much for me. If silver drops, I can take it with the horse. I might even be able to take dragon takes, um, maybe. I can't mess this up now. At least morally speaking. Okay, that was super duper clumsy of me. Oops, that's okay. Yeah, I promise I didn't make that mistake intentionally. Thanks for the game. Ooh, that was intense. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that was not intentional or showing off or anything. Um, yeah. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so they managed to build an initiative in the opening. Um, yeah, I didn't see a way to neutralize their initiative. They really got control of this third file. Um, so out of desperation, I started exchanging pieces. Um, yeah, it looks to me like they are doing much better. Um,
Oh, okay. This is one way of thinking about the position. That's true. Um, hmm. Yes, if they hit my rook, there's not a lot I can do about that. Yeah, that does look even better. Like, he's better in the main line. Or, I'm sorry, the, the main game he's doing well, but Bishop Trey actually improves his position, which is already quite dominant. So, unless there's some trick here. Um, yeah. Stop the rook from going to 4-4. Four, four. Ah, okay, so this is the thought here. Their position's still better, but um, at least now I've got something to try to do in this position. Whereas previously I was just floundering about. Um, so yeah, that um, they committed a bit too hard to that. Um, at this point, they don't have that bishop drop anymore, so they're still better here, but... Um, it's not as convincing as earlier. Um, curiously, I might have a bishop 5-5 five five threat. Although, yeah, this position's still tricky. I mean, what the hell do I do? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Imagine having the luxury of being able to block that way. That is nice. Yeah. Oh, damn, my position's terrible. That's impressive. Uh, it's kind of amazing just how bad it is. I mean, they do say, like, when I'm playing Ranging Rook, I should be avoiding this bishop exchange. In the game, the bishop exchange did give me some chances, but yeah, it shouldn't have. So, I guess that's the thought. Is that This bishop allows me to pressure their king. So exchanging it is kind of a last resort. Um, yeah, my position sucks <laughs> a lot. That's impressive. I wonder, I mean, yeah, I built this nice little castle and it served me well in the game, but, um, hmm, wonder what I could have done better. Climbing gold is pretty good against, uh, Ishida. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I'm starting to get back into the swing of playing third file rook and trying to play the Ishida formation. This climbing gold is quite effective. Uh, yeah. And at this point in the game, I finally am not completely lost. Or my position's kind of okay. So, false to my opponent to come up with some accurate moves here. They still had plenty of chances in the game. Um, yeah, this bishop drop, um,
suspicious drop seems a bit odd. Like, I'm sure they could have done anything other than this drop, and they would have had some uh, initiative. Um... We don't have to, well, I'm not sure what they're trying to point out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like. So, I mean, this is supporting this, this is supporting this, so, yeah. So yeah, it's after they do this bishop drop on four four that like and build up this massive initiative. Um wait, let's see. Uh where was it in the move list? Here. Uh That's tricky. So if they want to look at it, we can look at it while they're here. Otherwise, we'll just look at it afterward. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. is kind of trapped so uh yeah i'm not sure like clearly i'm not going to exchange two bishops for a rook uh i mean unless i've got made um I think you can just do this. Um, yeah. And if my math is right, like, yeah. So, I think I messed up. Um, I, I'm not sure what to say about that. Um, I misread this. Uh, we were both in time pressure, but yeah, this clearly looks like a very strong continuation with a solid castle and being up a piece and the piece is a bishop in this position where my king is wide open and exposed to bishop checks and yeah um so I, I just whiffed super hard and got fortunate and from here on out now i've really got the initiative and i just don't think there's coming back from it at this point uh, I might have attacked inaccurately. There might have been better. Yeah, that was a nice Tsuji.
Uh, it takes away the only activity their rook has. Alright, did I miss a mate? Probably. I wonder. <laughs> I tried. Um, oh, they only have a bishop to interpose. <laughs> so, yeah, this could have worked very well for me had I pursued it. Um, yeah, that would have been nice. Yeah. I mean, there might be a checkmate somewhere, but this wins, so this is good enough. Um, So, probably an engine could find... yeah. After that pawn drop on 3-8, I don't think there was any defending this position. My attack might have sucked, but um, even my attack was enough to break it in. Okay, so they're considering this straight away. Um, hmm. There was some reason I was concerned this might not work. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I was concerned that this might not succeed somehow, but that looks pretty decisive. Instead, I make my task more difficult. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, you got this threat. Um, so you're able to pick up the horse at the end of that line. So that's why I picked this variation. Yep, yep. So. <laughs> I was a little bit careful there, and it paid off that I was. Ah. Uh. Super careful, and it took me forever to pull off a checkmate here because of that. But hey, I won. Um, now, do they not have the right pieces to defend with here? Um, hmm. Oh. I thought they had generals to defend with. I misread that. Somehow I thought they'd get a general and be able to, like, delay my attack somehow. Which is definitely not the case there. So, because of that, I took the long route. <laughs> uh... Yeah, so clearly I saw, like, the only reason they'd bring the dragon this way is to support bringing the token toward my gold. 
Um, they just didn't have time for that. And yeah, bringing my horse back slowed my attacks slightly, but not enough to make any difference. Um, yeah, their position is just untenable here, unfortunately, for them. Um, yeah, it would have been much more impressive if I found something. Well, yeah, after my pawn to Suji, I think your position is lost. After I did this one here. Um, yeah, so... We can argue semantics about I didn't attack properly, and I didn't, but uh, I still won. All right, yeah, uh, I missed quite a few things, but let's see. Oh, um, let's see, is there anything else I noted in this game or was curious about? Um... Let's see. Well, that looks normal. Oh, I'm sure there's something. I wondered about this. Like, it's a useful waiting move, but I don't think I had to respond to it just yet. I guess this, like, somehow anticipates this. Um, oh! Okay, so yeah, it also protects against this sort of stuff. Yeah, if they want to defend against bishop drops, they have to account for stuff like that, too. This gold is a bit loose, but they want to secure against bishop drops before they, like, secure against other stuff, I guess. And they do intend to push the center pawn and take more space here. Um... Like... So if I can't bring the bishop out this way, um, that, yeah, that makes some sense, too. Although I was already discouraged because this diagonal stayed open. Um, Uh, climbing gold. Oh, he welcomes the plenary Ishida. That is the full complement with the knight, uh, pawn, rook, bishop, and all that stuff. So he welcomes that. So, okay. With his climbing gold. Yeah, he welcomes that. So that's interesting, although it does expose this bishop exchange possibility. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, what can I do here? Um, so I must have missed something.
Maybe I need to bring my silver up, or I don't know. Just seems super hard to deal with these climbing gold, climbing silver, pole silver, whatever. Um, like how? Hmm. How is it that they get such a decent position, and I don't? Um, wait. So, I wonder here maybe I need to play something like this. Um, but this seems weak, right? Oh, okay, never mind. All right, so they defend. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what to try. That might not make sense. Um, I mean, this way at least my work's on this file and can do something, but it still looks quite difficult. It's this kind of breakthrough that I was concerned about. Um, okay, yes, I could see that. It just looks really tough to hold on to. Um, yeah, maybe something like this. I don't know. And I guess the idea is something like this. This is floating. Ah! Ah! This climbing gold is very strong. So, yeah, I don't know what to do about it. But I guess this is the dilemma that, like, it's just hard to do anything. Um, Sometimes I should play this to get some idea, like, what the hell do I do? This third foul rook doesn't seem to completely quash this. Um, and exchanging the bishops is tremendously complicated, and I don't want to go there just yet. Uh, yeah. I know I don't play static rook openings in general, but um, sometimes I have to face them, so I should have some idea how to play against it. So, might have to put some moratorium on that. Don't play static rook policy. I know last week on our teaching ladder, I played a couple games where I did it, and those games didn't go well, but that's not a fault of the static rook. It's a fault of me not building a castle. Like, we saw this castle is actually fairly strong. Um, and it takes, what, a few moves to build, right? You push the gold over, uh, the silver up here, and the king in the hole. Let me call that Elmo. And yeah, to me, Elmo it frees up the other two generals to do whatever the hell they want, um, which makes it really difficult for Bishop Drop to strike, so... Uh, nice. Um... Is there anything else I wanted to look at? I'm not sure. 
Um, yes, I exchanged bishops here. Oh, um, so I played this. Yeah. So I just expected this directly. Um, so, like, this is fine, but... Um, yes, I played this. Like, this looks just crushing. Because uh, I don't have a counter to, like, this. Like you got all these squares covered. Um, so I think I've messed up pretty royally to get here. Um, there's just no way for me to come back. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, maybe I misread this or something. I don't know. Oops, yeah, so we are starting this variation. I'm thinking my castle is weak to attacks from the side. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, this just looks hard for me to play anything. So, so yeah, I just wanted to point out, like, this looked very nice for you, um, in addition to the bishop exchange, which also looked very nice for you. Um, So, yeah, I need to, like, play more actively um, and make sure I'm targeting the king. Yeah. Oh, he kind of likes this line. <laughs> uh... Because, anyway, so that's, um, I think that's uh, all I uh, remember I uh, wanted uh, to review. Uh, you mostly covered the game. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, good luck, uh, the upcoming, uh, turn into series, uh, yeah, yeah, GG. Um, yeah, I'll need it. Yeah, I guess we both need it, because we're both playing in Turney to Master, uh, run by Shoki Harper, and the idea behind this Turney to Master tournament, um, is that um, 
players of various levels enter into certain sections, and we're in the section from 1Q uh, through 3Q, or 1 Don through 3 Don. Yeah. Uh, so we get to play against other players that are similarly uh, of similar strength. So uh, it's going to be one hell of an uphill fight. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes once we get there. Uh, so, yeah, what do we take from this? Uh, yeah, this is a really strong formation. I should maybe consider playing it sometimes. There's a lot of static rook stuff that I don't particularly care for playing. Um, but, you know, if I could get in an occasional game playing like this, maybe I'd have a better idea what to play against it. I don't know. Otherwise, I just have to read about what other people do and try to remember it. But playing gives you a more active memory. And yeah, he's right that this bishop uh, gave, how, helped to give me the initiative because it took away their obvious plan. So this just derailed his pattern of thought. Uh, so this, yeah, this capture looks quite reasonable. This was superfluous. Um, yeah, during the game I mentioned, oh, if he just puts the bishop on the same diagonal. This is what I was referring to. Um, and here, if I exchange, well, I have to exchange. If I do that and then I play this again, um, turns out my bishop's trapped. Now, that's not to say like that's the best way they could handle this, but um, the notion that like this bishop drop doesn't eat it's the best thing I can do, and it doesn't even do anything. It speaks volumes. Um, so we see that this is defending the pawn. You do need that to defend the pawn, but yeah, like here they hold all the trump cards. There's nothing I can do. Um, eventually they'll throw this in my face, and I'll just cry. So, um, yeah. Uh, so they uh, had to find that. They found this instead and expected me to do something with my... I actually, during the game, was looking at this. There's just not a line there. It's just not enough material. They have too much of an initiative. It's very close to maybe being something, but it's just not even... Um, yeah, I couldn't find any way to make that work. So we had the variation in the game that worked out. Um, uh, if I noticed this were attacked, I wouldn't have done that. That was silly. I could just do this instead. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks to my opponent for the game, and thank you, uh, Grolik. Yeah, we'll do our best. Oh yeah, you hoping to join in the same tournament to master? Uh, trying to make a comeback? We'll take as many players as we can get. Uh, I remember last time around facing Journey, Step, and others. Gosh, that was one hell of an uphill battle. Um, I I got crushed that game against Journey Step, and it was kind of almost demoralizing just what a crush it was. But then uh, at the end of the season, actually this is two seasons ago, and I'm still recoiling from it. Um, but at the end of this most recent season, we remember you got to play against a uh, two-piece handicap against Katagami Sensei, and uh, he won that game. So, yeah, there's no shame in losing to such a strong player. So, everybody's going to need good luck. The rating system will probably win out in the end, but we'll all do our best. Um, in the meantime, I'm just trying to enjoy the teaching ladder, trying to enjoy the Tourney 2 series, not really having any expectation of winning it because I'd need to put in a lot more effort if that were my goal. Uh, right now I'm focusing on coding stuff. Like, you can see the translation bot that works in our Twitch channel. You can see Lee Shogi. I gradually contribute code there, although it takes forever, and I don't... I'm not spending all my time on it. But I get my attention split many different directions. Trying to play well in these tournaments is good fun, a good learning experience. I encourage others to play the teaching ladder and um 
hopefully the scheduling concerns will work out a lot better this time around than they've done a couple tournaments ago. We'll see um, if, yeah, if things have smoothed out quite a bit, then next time around I'll heartily recommend H-E-A-R-T-I-L-Y, uh, heartily recommend uh, that people do this uh, Tourney 2 series. This time around I'm not yet recommending it because uh, in the past I got burned by some of these scheduling concerns, but I think it's all smoothed out now, and I think I have a little time to play in this tournament, so I'll give it a shot. Uh, yeah, so hope we all enjoy it, and we'll see you all there when we do participate in that. And thanks for joining us for this Teaching Ladder game today. Um, it's a weekly thing. You can join the Teaching Ladder on 81 Dojo. Uh, all skill level players are welcome to participate. Uh, if you saw me participate last week, I played some kind of sketchy freestyle openings and um, got some interesting positions, but did not demonstrate as much skill as I wanted to this time. Uh, I played a more thematic style, not, I mean, this is okay. Probably what I should do is this here. I don't know. It's complicated. I was afraid to do this. I'm not going to waste my opponent's time looking at all this stuff. Uh, but maybe I need to review this again and see, like, does this, this lead to anything? I don't know. Probably not anything good. So that's why I played my rook up instead of like playing this here this looks sketchy um anyway there's probably some continuation where i don't have to close the diagonal and i can still survive against this attack and survive against this threatened fourth file rook stuff um so uh we'll give that some more thought but yeah i hope you all enjoyed this and we'll uh see you next time i've got another game to play soon we'll figure out when we schedule that so thank you.